let's uh, let's bring here thank you lord thank you father god thank you for this morning time father god thank you for this uh, new day that you've given us lord thank you for this opportunity to gather around lord your presence to gather around your word thank you for this privilege that you've given us lord each one of us to look into your word father god to study your word lord to understand your word thank you for the ability that you've given us lord to understand your word master and um Lord, we just want to thank you for your, uh, for you are with us to teach us, Lord, and uh, thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we, we just welcome you this morning. We pray and ask that you would come and, Lord, open our eyes, Lord, to see you, open our ears to hear you, Father God. Yes, Master, we just want to say that we love you, we adore you, we worship you. Lord, we, we bless your name, God. We give you praise. We give you praise, Father God. You are the high and exalted one. You are the one who's worthy of all our praise. You are the one who's worthy of all our worship, Lord. Yes, Lord, we come before you. We, Lord, we, we just um, bow down before you, Lord. We um, revere your presence, Father God, and uh, there's all honor and, and respect, God, is due to you, Father God, and you alone, Master. So we come before your presence in all humility, God, acknowledging who you are, acknowledging your greatness, acknowledging, Lord, your goodness, Father God. We thank you. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name. Thank you for being with us. Lord, I pray that you would lead us into all that you have for us, Lord, today, even as we look into your word, Master. All that you have for each one of us, Father, we know that you would meet with each one of us, God, that you would speak to our hearts, Lord. I pray that... Um, Lord, you would give, even as you give us understanding, even as you give us revelation, uh, Lord, I pray that um, our uh, spirits would be edified, Lord. There will be, uh, Lord, spiritual progress, Lord, something that will be uh, built up in the inner man. Lord, I, we, we just um, submit ourselves, we surrender ourselves that you will do this uh, for each one of us, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Right, so we'll start and, uh, okay. So we've been looking at Ephesians. So um, we stopped at Ephesians chapter three and verse seven, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, Chapter three and verse seven. Okay, uh, just one second. I just want to open up a document here. So, um, okay, let's uh, just go ahead and uh, you know read um, Ephesians three again from uh, you know from what we just review what we quickly looked at and uh, um, review what we looked at in Ephesians 3 and and then we'll go into um, um, verse 8 right let's let's read verse 3 I'm oh, sorry let's read chapter 3 verse 1 onwards okay so for this reason I Paul the prisoner of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you how that in how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as i have briefly written already by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in um my knowledge in the mystery of christ which in the other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it has now been revealed by the spirit to his holy apostles and prophets that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ Jesus, in Christ through the gospel, of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. So this is what we, uh, we read. This is what we um, looked at uh, in the last class, right? So we see that, um, you know, Paul is saying that how he's he's referring to himself as a prisoner of Christ, right? Um, that he is, uh, uh, you know, a prisoner of Christ, meaning that he is actually um, 
you know he cannot but do what god wants what the lord wants him to do and right? he he cannot but be in the a prisoner has no way of you know uh, doing his own his own thing right he is uh, he is boxed in he is in the prison and he he does not have the freedom to do whatever he wants to do right so in a sense uh, paul is like that in a sense whatever christ will is and that is what i want to do or oh, that is what in the, in the sense here you know he's saying this is my will also this is my desire also this is what i i want to do right so um so he's saying i'm the prisoner of christ jesus for you gentiles if indeed you heard of the dispensation of the grace of god which was given to me for you so i was saying you know this grace that was given you know like again when we review uh, when we look at the grace of god we see that it is divine favor divine character uh, is the empowering of god and it's also the divine uh, gifting right all the gifts the the free gifts of the spirit is given for us um these are this is also the grace of god so grace of god uh you know uh, encompasses or includes all these things right so uh, god extends his grace to us and we could become recipients of the grace of god and we also become stewards of the grace of god that is what we saw right so paul is actually the steward so he's saying this grace of god which was given to me for you the purpose of the grace of god just shown to uh, him shown to us as believers is so that we might extend the same or we might steward the same whether it's gifts or you know whether that's character in our own lives or you know, empowering of um, the uh, em the empowering that we receive that we might actually use it for the edification of others to bless others right so that's the that's the purpose and uh, Ephesians 3:3 3, 3, we see that uh, Paul says by revelation he made known to me the mystery so which means that uh, uh, this revelation uh, which was by the Spirit of God by the Holy Spirit you know if you look at um, chapter one he prays that Right, he prays that for the believers. Um, he he says, you know, that uh, Ephesians one and uh, you know, when he says, you know, uh, sixteen onwards, when he prays, he says, you know, I make mention of you in my prayers, um, that that um, the Father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. So this revelation. Uh, about the dispensation of Christ and uh, about the dispensation that we're living in and the grace of God and everything he you know everything he this mystery that he talks about the cross and everything he received by revelation okay by from the Holy Spirit from from God the Holy Spirit so he prays that in the in, in chapter one so here he's saying that you know he by revelation the Lord made known to him Okay, he made known to him the mystery, which was, um, you know, he says, you know, you when you read, you understand my knowledge. Okay, my knowledge in the mystery of God, and uh, and how that I, it was given to me so that I can share with others, I can steward it to others, right? And and he also says that in the other, the previous ages or in the times past, it was not made known. Okay, um, the the full understanding of this was not there in the uh, among the disciples or uh, in the church so uh, the full uh, knowledge of it was not there so he says that uh, in the other ages was not made known to the sons of men verse 5 as it is now been revealed by the spirit to his holy apostles and prophets so now it is not only paul but also the others Right. everyone um, the apostles and the prophets it is also the others who have been who have received this revelation okay so it's not only paul right what is that revelation he goes on to say that gentiles should be fellow heirs and partakers uh, of his promise in christ through the gospel that the salvation is for all jews and non-jews and uh, and the Gentiles also should be fellow heirs with uh, with Christ, right? They should also be fellow heirs of the same body. They are all part of the same spiritual body, which is Christ Himself, right? And verse seven he says, "Of which I became a minister 
I became uh, uh, one who serves. Um, that is, he's talking about the gospel. I became a minister of the gospel according to the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Okay, the effective working of his power says, um, again, uh, you know, if you if you see um, previously also, he makes a reference to the, the working of the, the power of God, the working of the power of uh, the Holy Spirit. Right? Where do we see that? Again, if you if you turn back to chapter one, we see um, um, you know, some of the things that you might know. Okay, that is what he is praying that the spirit of revelation and wisdom that he might give you revelation understanding uh, about, the, about, about the call of God, about the inheritance, and the third thing uh, that he says is that that you will know what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us that you might know what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us now this is something that uh, that he wants us to be familiar with he wants the believer to be familiar with to know to to receive an understanding of right so um this power of god this creative this uh, miracle wor miracle working supernatural power of god the dunamis of god saying you know that you may, you may know that you may experience, like know by experience, not just a, you know, I, I read about it, but he is saying, you know, you, the, uh, the believer, needs to know through experience, right? Needs to experience this power, miracle working power of God, right? So, so here in verse, uh, sorry, chapter three and verse seven also, he's, he talks about the same thing. This grace of God was given to him by the effective working of his power. Okay, so uh, again, the same word is used there, dunamis, which means the, the miracle working power of God, uh, the uh, you know, creative power of God. So the dunamis, um, the supernatural power of God is what actually, uh, uh, because of the supernatural power of God, uh, he was given this gift of um, uh, grace. Right, to be the minister of the gospel. Okay, let's uh, read from verse eight. Okay, eight onwards. To me, who am the who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages had been hidden God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through him, through faith in him. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Okay, so here, verse 8, Paul says, then, you know, to me who am less than the least of all the saints, and right? who am less than least of all the saints. So he's referring to himself as not as someone, you know, who's a, you know, super celebrity or not as someone who's a super minister. Uh, but he's saying, you know, I'm less than the least of the saints. And, uh, you know, in another place where he says, why, why right? Um, because he persecuted the church of God. So he's, he doesn't see himself as someone who's, you know, uh, someone who's above uh, everyone, someone who is uh, you know, on a pedestal, you know. But he sees himself as, in all humility, as someone who's less than least to the saints. And um, so to whom this grace was given. Okay, so which means that uh, God releases his supernatural grace, um, his miracle working power, right, uh, to, to ordinary people. Okay, uh, very, very important. Sometimes we might, we might come to the conclusion that, okay, that must be something, someone special, because God has given them that ability or as God has graced them with this gift. Now, when you look at the word of God, 
we see that he gives this grace to ordinary people the working effective working of his power to ordinary people so sometimes it's the most unlikely of people right who can who are you know given the grace to release something very very powerful something that is extraordinary right and um, so paul also says in a in verse 8 he says that um, that i should preach among the gentiles the unsearchable riches of christ okay the unsearchable riches meaning um, you know one way to look at it is that okay by my own human understanding and effort i cannot search it out okay now the riches of christ first of all the fact is that there are there is so much more okay uh, for us to receive for us to know for us to understand like in christ through christ there's so much more um, the second thing that we see is that it is unsearchable okay in the sense that i cannot figure it out by my own, own human understanding or ability but it comes through revelation or through the work of the spirit and the holy spirit reveals this to us so the ministry of the spirit to the believer is what releases these riches right see these are unsearchable okay the another way to look at um, that word unsearchable is also that it is um, you know it is uh, limitless right it is uh, you cannot keep track of it or you cannot count it it's uh, it's limitless right so it's without limit so um so paul talks about this saying that okay this is uh, you know without limit it's unsearchable it's limitless the riches of christ you know immeasurable wealth of what god has for us it's it's so great so he became a minister of that to bring that revelation to the church okay whatever was revealed to him to bring it to minister it steward it to the church okay uh, look at verse 9 and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages had been hidden in god so this mystery um, you know about uh, what what we have in Christ and uh, what we become in Christ and this mystery or uh, you know the word mystery is you know something that is hidden um, it has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ and right? so um, what is the fellowship of the mystery which means that what is our fellowship our participation our partnership right of the in this mystery um, and what is it it has been it was hidden in god in christ so which means that uh, you know um which was not revealed right which was just hidden in god and who created all things you know talks about the deity of christ right talks about the uh, pre-existence of christ you know this this verse again talks about you know if someone asks you know where does paul talk about it or you know where are there is there any any other reference to the deity of christ in several places you know we read in colossians and uh, you know colossians 1 and verse 15 16 um, and we also see in um, you know in in this verse that um, here it talks about how everything was created through christ right so verse 10 um who, sorry verse 9 who created all things through jesus christ verse 10 to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of god might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places so so god's will is that um, you know the wisdom of god his wisdom uh, his um, uh, uh, the knowledge of god the knowledge of uh, the understanding of god god is actually displaying it uh, through the principalities and powers um, to the through the angels and and uh, and you know for them he's actually putting it on display through the believer through the church right so you, you see that you know 
what uh, what role that the believer plays or what role corporately the church plays right so um, saying this is what it is that god puts on display that he might reveal the the wisdom the glory of god um to the principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of god may be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places okay um, then we go on to verse 11 according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in christ jesus our lord so it was not an arbitrary thing it was not a random thing but it's something which was an you know eternal purpose which means something that god initiated god planned and um, and which he accomplished in christ jesus our lord you know this is what was planned and scripture talks about how he is the lamb of god that was slain before the foundations of the earth so uh, you know we see that uh, god this is god's eternal purpose right even before he stepped into time right it was it was there in eternity that um, this would be accomplished through christ jesus our lord okay Verse 12, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Okay. So we have boldness and access right, um, to the Father through faith in Christ Jesus. So we can come before God. We have been, you know, there has been, we have been given access, meaning that, you know, you have the permission, you have the freedom. Um, there is nothing stopping us, right? There's nothing hindering. So we have been given access to come before the Father. We have been given access to complete, uh, you know, uh, freedom and permission and the privilege to come before the Father. Right? We have access, uh, which, which was not there earlier, right? So we can have boldness. We can come with boldness and confidence. We can come before him. We can you know, draw near to him through faith in him, right? Um, so another thing for us to understand is that we need to come before him with boldness and confidence because of what has happened um, on the cross and because of how that has affected us, how that has changed us, how that has made us, uh, you know, righteous and uh, given us the permission had made a way for us to come okay so that's something for us to uh, for us to walk in you know this uh, if god has given us this privilege if god has given us this permission then if he's desiring that we should walk with boldness that we should draw near with confidence then we should do so right uh, we can we we don't we don't uh, like worship him from a distance or we don't you know um, uh, do anything that is contrary to this you know, this is what he desires this is how he wants us to approach him with boldness and confidence through faith in him right so this is what we see and um, yeah so verse 13 it says uh, therefore i ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you which is your glory okay so saying don't lose heart don't uh, be discouraged because of you know because of where i am or the things that i go through you know we need to remember that you know this is one of the prison epistles right this is one of the epistles written by paul when he was in prison so uh, so he's actually in prison and he's encouraging the the believer the church uh, in Ephesus and he's saying that you know you don't be discouraged now because of all that I'm going through of the tribulations that I'm going through uh, for the sake of the gospel and for your sakes right even in ministry as I'm ministering and as I travel I'm going through these difficulties I'm going through these tribulations but I do not want you to be discouraged okay now that's a great perspective right so especially if you see that it's coming from a person who's in prison. It's coming from someone who is uh, uh, who's a prisoner. And here he is encouraging others who are not prisoners and encouraging others who are actually free. Right? So, so the kind of faith he had 
and the kind of uh, relationship that he had with the savior the reality you know of uh, uh, of his faith and it's very inspiring okay let's read from 14 till the end of the chapter right for this reason i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ from whom the whole he- whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of god now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us to him be glory in the church by christ jesus to all generations forever and ever amen okay so here again is a prayer just like how he prayed in chapter 1 for the church um here in chapter 3 verse 14 he is you know is is again praying he's saying for this reason what reason um you know all the verses before that talk about the reason the fact that you know god has given me this revelation god has made me a minister of this gospel and that to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery of god um the church is making you know the the manifold wisdom of god on display for the principalities and powers to see and know god has done that uh, according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished right so for all this right for this reason he says i bow my knee to the father uh, of our lord jesus christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named okay so so he's is praying this prayer and uh, he's saying you know um uh, you know the the father then you know i bow my knees to him to god from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named so you know there are there are people on earth who are part of the family of god there are people in heaven who have already you know which means people have uh, received christ and who have gone on to be with christ in heaven so they are also part of the family of god right so he's saying that okay now you know they're all part of the the family. uh and and so this family is we don't see as being part of the family when we go to heaven we are still part of the family of god and uh, here on earth yes we are part of the family of god we are sons and daughters of god we when we receive christ so that is what we become so we see all that and here he says this is what he's praying verse 16 okay what is he praying is praying that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man okay so that's the first thing that he prays um uh, there are almost around five things right five things that he, let me let me just uh, share the uh, document here so you can also see and follow okay okay so okay so the first thing that he prays is that this um that you would be strengthened that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory okay according to the riches of who he is or and according to the you know the abundance of who he is and what he can do you know there's no limit to it so according to that may you be strengthened with might okay and again the word used there is dunamis may you be strengthened with dunamis with this power you know, so you see that um paul wants the believer right he or god i should say this way that god wants the believer to you know to be strengthened with god's power okay Uh, according to his riches right in the glory according to what he has you know his he is uh, immeasurable he is infinite 
right? God is immeasurable, God is infinite, um, but he wants the believer to be strengthened, to be made strong, to grow strong, to increase in strength, you know, that's what it means, to be strengthened, to increase in strength or to grow strong. And um, with what, right? With the dunamis of God, right? Miraculous power, supernatural ability, might. Right? So he's, he's praying, he's praying that, that God would actually strengthen you right? by his Holy Spirit, by his spirit in the inner man, right? In the inner man, that uh, in your spirit, in the inner man, in, a, in your innermost being, that you would be strengthened with this kind of power. So which means that, you know, this is for us as a church. This is for us as individuals, as believers, right? So this is for us to pray, receive, be strong in. Okay, so we don't have to be apologetic. We don't have to be praying this with any kind of hesitation, right? We don't have to pray this with any kind of doubt. No way. You can pray with confidence because this is something that Paul prayed for the church, that we would be strengthened with God's miraculous supernatural power in our inner man. Okay, so that we would we would be strength. So what does it mean to be, you know, strengthened with this power that um, the Holy Spirit works in us? The Holy Spirit causes us to go out and, and do the works. Right? But first of all, we need to be strengthened ourselves. And, and God, it's God's will that we be strong. It's God's will that we be strong in the inner man, right? That, um, that we be a, a conduit, that we be an instrument, so that he can flow through, but also that we experience his strength in our spirit and we become strengthened ourselves. Okay, so strengthen with might in the inner man. Okay, secondly, uh, verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, right? So that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. Now, you know, the thing is, the uh, Christ already dwells in us, right? He already dwells in the believer. We we read, in fact, in the same uh, chapter one, when we see, um, so we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined, chapter one, verse 11, and then we go on to chapter, uh, I'm sorry, we go on to verse 13 and 14, we see that the Holy Spirit, we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, and he is the guarantee of our inheritance, etc. So, you know, we've been sealed with the mark of the Spirit, and we see that he he actually indwells us. Right? So, what is Paul talking about? Right? So, Paul is talking about that Christ's likeness be seen in us, right? Christ being formed in us. Um and we see in, in Galatians, you know, we he saw that he said, you know, that I am going, I, I labor, I I go through labor so that Christ be formed in you. Right? Um, I labor in birth. You know, that's what he's Paul says, I labor in birth, you know, meaning he's praying, is it's as if he's going through uh, you know, labor pains and uh, um, so that to bring to birth something. And so saying, I, I'm laboring in birth till Christ is formed in you. So, so this is something that he's praying for, that there'll be, there will be Christ-likeness seen in the believer. Right? Secondly, second thing, to be strengthened with might in the spirit in your inner man. That's the first thing. Secondly, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Um, third one, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Okay. So he says, uh, you know, that that's something that I want you to be, uh, want you to have that, or want you to become being rooted and grounded in the love of God. So meaning that uh, you be strong, let that be your foundation, the love of God, 
Um, so when we are strong in the love of God, you know, the kind of love that God has for us, and we understand that God loves us, God, uh, you know, he, he loved, you know, the, the love of God has been poured out into our heart. Um, and it is the God kind of love that has been given to us to put on display to others, right? to show to others, to extend to others. Right? So he's saying, you know, let that be your foundation. Let that be something that you're strong in, that you be rooted and grounded in love. Okay. And fourthly, says, uh, you know, after being rooted and grounded in love, says that you may be able to comprehend, which means understand with all the saints, what is the width and depth and uh, width and depth and length, uh, sorry, width, length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Okay, so to be able to understand, to be able to, and to come to that place of understanding with the body of Christ. Um, so he's saying that um, now you come to know this um, love, but he says, you know, which which the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, which goes beyond knowledge and understanding, okay, which is uh, uh, which is something you know. He's saying, okay, you come to know it, but it it passes knowledge. You see, it's it seems like um, something that's contradictory, right? You come to know the love of God. But at the same time, it passes knowledge, you know, it passes all ability to know, uh, know things. So that is the love of God. You know, it's because it's, we know it's, it is, you know, uh, God's characteristic because uh, scripture says in, in 1 John, we read God is love. So that is his character. That is his nature. In other words, he's saying that you may come to know God himself, right? To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. And, um, and the last thing that he prays in, this, in the same uh, you know, verse is that, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. That you may be filled with the fullness of God. Um, the fullness of God, which means, again, the character, the nature, the power, who, who God is, may you be filled with his fullness may be filled with this fullness. Um, and the reason to be filled with this fullness is to display, you know, is to manifest. That's the only reason, right? That you may be filled with the fullness of God. And then uh, we go on to verse 20, where it says that now to him who is able to do, okay? Now to him who is able to, to, uh, he has the ability to do, okay, to carry out. And he goes on to say how he carries out, which is exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. You know, now it's, that, is the, that is the capacity or that's the ability that he has. So he says now to him, which is God himself, now to him, who is able to do, okay? And he does exceedingly abundantly, okay? Exceedingly meaning without measure, abundantly again, in abundance, above all that we ask or think, right? Above all that we ask, or maybe we have, we have not even voiced it, we are thinking now he's able to do that. And he's able to do that according to the power that works in us. Now, that's the beautiful thing. According to the power of the Holy Spirit, who is operational in us. Right? So, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, which is at work in us, is also the same power that raised Christ from the dead. Right? In other words, it's the resurrection power of Christ. One and the same power. Right? The same power that raised Christ from the dead uh, is the same power that is at work in us, is in you. you know, the same power that working in us, working in you. Now, uh, which means that the possibilities are endless right? for a person who is uh, 
who is submitted, for a person who is walking in faith, uh, for a person who is, uh, you know, walking uh, according to the will of God and uh, want, desiring to see more of God. Now, this is, you know, the possibilities are endless because he is able to do according to the power that work in, works in us. And he's able to do exceedingly abundantly, right, above all that we ask or think. Now, the, that is his ability. Also, we know that that is his will as well. Okay. Now you might think, okay, God has the ability, but does he have the will? I mean, in the sense, and does he want to do it? Right. So there are two diff two things, right? Having the ability and wanting, desiring to do it. Right. But the fact is that uh, according to the, you know, he's, he's able to do above all that we ask or think. Uh, according to the power that works in us. Um, and in fact, the verses prior to that also talk about uh, uh, that he would grant us, verse 16, that he would grant you to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Right. So, which means that he, it is his will. It is his will for you to be strengthened. It is his will for the work the the work of the holy spirit to be made manifest it is his will he wants to put on display even to the powers and principalities um the manifold wisdom uh he wants to put put on display the wisdom of his wisdom and through the believer through the church so therefore we know that it is his will to do exceedingly. Not only does he have the ability, but it is his will, it is his desire to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. And it is according to the Holy Spirit power that is at work in us. Okay. And um, then, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Okay, so by the church, let, let him let there be glory to him. Let there be, uh, you know, uh, let him be glorified. Let him let him be lifted up. Um, let him be glorified by the church, by the believer. Uh, let there be glory uh, by Christ Jesus to all generations. Uh, not only in this generation, but to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Okay. So, so this is uh, something that he prays for the, uh, no, another of the prayer that he prays for the believer. Okay. Right. So let's look at um, next chapter, chapter four, and uh, let's look at the first few verses, right? So um, chapter four, verse one, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one father of all who is above all, and through all and in you all okay so again he here he refers to him as himself as the prisoner of the lord and what is he doing as a prisoner of the lord he is beseeching you know he is literally begging um you know and and he's uh, you know he's he's calling he's coming coming alongside um and uh, literally entreating, right? He's, he's, he's literally, you know, to say that he's requesting and strong request, you know, he's like beseeching, you know, you need to do this. I'd like, like you to do this. Please, can you do this, right? So what is he asking in, the, in such a manner? What is he beseeching? Saying that, that you may walk worthy of the Lord. Okay, that's his thing that, you know, that you walk worthy, that you live you make choices, uh, you speak, you do things in everything that you may walk worthy of the calling which with which you were called. Okay, so um, in the previous, uh, uh, in chapter one, he says that you may know what is the hope of the call. 
Okay. So here is here is another thing that he's is saying is 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 desiring is is really you know literally begging the believer that you may walk worthy. Okay, that you may walk worthy of the call with which you were called. You know, walk meaning you know whatever you do, wherever you go, however you live, let it be worthy of the call with which you were called. Okay, so something some thoughts here uh, about how to walk worthy. You know, in all humility, not with arrogance or pride, to be gentle, to be long suffering. You know, to bear one another in love. Uh, you know, he, he talks about that endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. Um, you know, he, so he talks about that. But so this is something that he's desiring you know, that you would. Um, in in you know in verse two he talks about that right uh, that you would walk worthy of the calling. And verse 2 says, this is what, with all loneliness and gentleness, with long-suffering or patience, right? bearing with one another, you know, uh, bearing with one another, to, uh, you know, just enduring, toler tolerating, goes going beyond tolerating, right? Um, you understand and uh, you help one another, bearing with one another in love, okay? Endeavoring or trying or putting in effort to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace to keep the unity of the spirit now endeavoring meaning that you put in effort now it's it's not going to come easy and it's it's not going to come just like that okay so you need to actually be earnest or diligent to put in some effort in this area okay okay we'll stop here and then after the break we'll we will continue from uh verse three right we'll we'll stop here for now okay we'll take a 10 minute break and then we'll come back